Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Well, I'm trying to cool off after that stupid incident that happened to my best friend. But now, I'm getting even more angrier because I just watched another stupid psychological horror film. And, <laughs> trust me on this one. When you have a hack writer and director who gave us... Pinocchio's Revenge, Stay Alive, and the one film that I totally walked out of, The Devil Inside, you know you're in trouble. That name is William Brent Bell, and move over Uwe Bao and M. Night Shyamalan. Here's another hack that loves to direct really bad horror films. And I just can't believe this stupid idiot it's getting so much work. Especially after the devil inside. And once again, it's another fucking Living Dow film that I've been seeing so many these days. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, enough of that shit, okay? I love Child's Play. I love magic. Why are we getting films like Annabelle and this film that I'm about to review today called simply The Boy. <laughs> oh wow, The Boy. What a generic title for a film. Well, in fact, originally it was going to be called The Habitant, but I guess they thought, oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Because this time it's a Living Dow film about a boy. Yeah, a creepy boy who's basically a China Dow wearing a black wardrobe. And he has black hair too. And claims to be their son. Until we discover the secret behind this. And the fact that they're hiring an American nanny to take over just so she can get money and, and just take care of them before something bad happens? I mean, come on, man. Seriously? And it has a star from The Walking Dead, too. Wow, she really needs a paycheck. This bad. Well, let's just continue with the review so I can get pissed off even more now than I already am. But on the other hand, though, it does seem very intriguing at times because at least they weren't shoving that Dow down our throats like they did in Annabelle. Yeah, the spinoff to The Conjuring, which, by the way, I did love The Conjuring, but I totally hated the spinoff, Annabelle. Okay, I already know how creepy the Dow was, but I didn't want to see, like, every single scene of that stupid Dow being shoved down my throat just so they could throw a jump scare. <laughs> it stars Lowen Cohan from The Walking Dead with Rupert Evans, Jim Norton, Diana Hartcastle, Ben Robertson, James Russell, Jack Klein, and Lily Petter. It's written by Stacy Manier and it's directed by, out of all people, William Brent Bell. The mood begins when a young American woman from Montana named Greta, who's played by Lauren Cohan, who just escaped from an abusive relationship by her ex-boyfriend, Cole, who's played by Ben Robson, by getting a temporary job working as a nanny for a British family known as the Heelshare. And when she arrived at the UK inside their mansion, she introduced herself to the couple, Mr. and Mrs. Hearshire, both were played by Jim Norton and Diane Harcastle before meeting their young son, Brams. What she doesn't know is that Brams is actually a porcelain china doll that's being treated as a living trial by his parents. The real Brams had been burned into a fire back in 1991 when he was only eight years old. So Mrs. Hirscher had used the doll stating that Brams had met many nannies, all of which had been rejected. 
And while the couple had decided to leave on a holiday, they give Greta a list of rules to follow, warning her that Brands is not indeed a normal child. So throughout the entire film, Greta is just spending more time with the boy, you know, Rams, by doing all these normal routines, you know, just making all these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, talking to her friend on the phone, you know, getting ready for an upcoming party that she's about to go to, or so on and so forth, before meeting here shares a grocery boy named Malcolm, who's played by Rupert Evans. But strange things are about to happen once Greta refused to follow Brams' rules, such as that one night, just as she was about to get ready to go to bed, during a thunderstorm, she begins to hear a little kid crying all the way into the hallways. All the phone calls are being cut off when she was talking to her friend. And then she has a, a deeply suspicion that Brams is actually moving on his own that a human spirit must have uh, possessed him. Also, one night, she was about to get ready to put on a party dress and tr just trying to go out with her friend, Malcolm, for a date. She went inside the shower until suddenly her dress is, has completely disappeared and she winds up going up into the attic and got stuck in there thinking that this might be a prank that Malcolm had just pulled. So when she was in the attic just trying to get out and trying to warn Malcolm since he was already here that he was up in the attic and then uh, she got knocked out unconscious until the morning comes. And then Malcolm had finally helped her out. Um, and even after that she later found some photos of Brams with his childhood friend Emily. Yeah, when um, Brams was alive. So then, after that, her ex boyfriend Cole had finally arrived inside the Hirscher's home by tracking Greta down and determined to bring her home, but she refused to do so because now he becomes even more angered by the appearance of the message that's being written in blood and all this and and not only that too but uh, the Hirscher family had just committed suicide by drowning themselves yeah um I think that's just pretty much what the film's all about, and I'm not going to give away the suspense that happens at the end of the film, because it's just too fucking ridiculous. But uh, I'll give you this, though. I thought Lauren Cohan did a great job playing the role as Greta. I think she was the only good thing about this movie, as well as uh, Malcolm, who was played by uh, Rupert Evans. And, yes, even the couple... Uh, Jim Norton and Diane Hardcastle did a great job for their roles. But I had to say, this movie fucking sucks. This was a lousy script that was written by Stacey Minear. I mean, I'm surprised that William Brent Bill didn't write this, but it could have been a whole lot worse. I mean, other than the fact that it did have some decent cinematography that was done by Daniel Pearl, gives it more of a a gothic-like feel to it, I mean, using all this dark tints, especially when you go inside the mansion, or outside of it, or any other. I mean, it was definitely a cloudy day. But then, it does have some completely awkward editing that just keeps repeating itself over and over and over again. And that was done by Brian Burdan, because all this editing that they put into the film just seems to happen so fast. It was ridiculous. It just keeps speeding up one second at a time. It just cuts to one scene after another. And especially when they start seeing shots of the Dow just sitting around in every single corner in the room. Like, there's one scene where Greta was on the phone talking to her friend, and then she just keeps spotting the same Dow, Brams, just sitting right there 
in the bedroom, on the bed. It repeats itself three times. That's right, three fucking times. And once uh, she was about to make a phone call to her friend to talk about what's wrong with this Dow and why does he keep following her everywhere he goes and why he keeps hiding everywhere throughout the entire room. It's like he was one day he's there and the, the next he's gone. <laughs> and then he keeps moving around each and every corner even though we don't even know that he's moving. Because we just see him only there for for one room at a time. Like he's sitting into the hallways right there. He's sitting um, into the chair. He's sitting there into the table. Or, <laughs> I mean, he was in the bed, but then he just got out and he wants to be into the living room for some reason. I mean, geez, it just goes on and on and on and on. And then there are a lot of scenes that just does the same thing where the doll just keeps moving around each and every corner, hides around every single room, just as she su suspects that the, this Dao is actually moving. He was trying to warn Malcolm about this, but, you know, he doesn't listen. And it just goes around doing the same thing over and over again. And yes, another awkward editing shot was when it when everybody was trying to go inside the car or inside every single room out there it just edited out the scene within a second and it's ridiculous I hate this kind of editing that they just put in movies these days it's like they're just cutting really quickly like it's a trailer we don't need that shit also there are a lot of awkward scenes uh, with the couple you know they're just going around you know, talking to the Dow, you know, coming up with some strange dialogue. Even though they are good actors, too. I mean, this is coming from the writer, uh, Stacy Manier. And also, you know, there are other awkward dialogue, too, in the film, but I, I don't want to talk more about that because it's just it's too stupid to, to mention it. But hey, I mentioned other bad dialogue I've seen in movies. Yeah, there are a lot of shots where they actually showed uh, Greta actually having a nightmare. And she's been getting nightmares twice already where the doll just seems to move awkwardly. And and there's a scene where the, the doll actually uh, moves very funny once uh, she discovers it. And then, yeah, it, it just happens. Damn these dream sequences and and there are a few jump scares here and there. I mean it doesn't go on very often. I'll give you that because uh, I've seen a lot of worse jump scares in the Devil Inside than I did it here, and even the jump scares in Annabelle. The climax was a joke. I, I really didn't buy this whole entire thing, and and while the score was um, done very well, it's just. It's just a completely stupid movie. I mean, you know exactly what's going to happen next, and I just really didn't buy this whole this whole stupid concept. <laughs> but what can you do? Seeing that this movie only made sixty-four million dollars at the box office out of its ten million budget, <laughs> wow! I mean, this movie isn't even original at all, and it just makes money. That's why you guys should stop giving money to this hack director, William Brent Bill, because that's what happens when you know you're suspicion to see a horror movie like this. And after seeing this movie, I'm already getting tired of the genre. Why can't we have a horror movie that's done right, instead of the same old, same old crap? Exactly. So... Put that aside, the boy sucks. It's another shitty movie that this movie will soon become totally forgotten. I mean, if you want to see a better Living Doubt film, check out Child's Play. Hell, even the sequels are better than this. And Magic, too. Because I'll tell you this, there are so much better films than fucking the boy 
Annabelle <laughs> or any other Living Doll ripoff film that we've been getting these days. Because this is just getting old now. So anyway, I give the boy one star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.